everybody and welcome back to War Thunder. In today's video I'm going to be talking about some really cool things with you guys including speculation, rumors, and things that are likely to come out in War Thunder from patch 1.49 onwards or even earlier than that in later iterations of 1.47. So what I'm going to be showing you guys is topics that have been brought up by the War Thunder Player Council with the Gaijin developers. These topics were brought by the community's feedback, their input into what should be brought up with the developers and so the developers responded to it and now these are the things that are likely to come out and be changed and whatnot. Now these topics I thought were most striking to me and are the ones I'm showing you guys, however I'm not covering every single one that was talked about, so if you really really want to check out every single one, I'll provide a link in the description box below to the forum thread in which you can go read it. So the first one that was most striking to me was that ground strike missions are being removed and replaced by something else. Take a look at this, this is what the War Thunder Player Council had to say. Right now in AB ground strike, fighters do not have a direct way of winning the game. Pulling more bombers is usually a better way to win the game by either hitting the ground targets or strategic targets. There are new modes as well as options for fighters to make a real impact to win the game are being introduced into AB to replace basic ground strike. They will be more focused and balanced to allow greater role for fighters but still giving good and challenging target for bombers. He couldn't discuss details currently as they're working on a major overhaul. Different missions, different gameplay. Changes won't be ready for 1.47, unfortunately, but should be available, available before 1.49. 1.47 will eventually bring more events that experiment with different game mechanics like the Note HUD events. So there's immediately a few things that we can pick from this post. Firstly, in arcade battles, there's two modes that planes go out in. Either Ground Strike or Domination. In Domination, fighters have kind of a bit more of a role because they have to cap airfields, but at the same time, bombers have a role as well because a lot of times there will be ground units and if they get on the airfield, then you can't cap the airfield and it might go towards the enemy. So that's where bombers come in and they can destroy those ground units and then the fighters or whatever can land on the airfield and then cap it and then you win, right? In Ground Strike, however, fighters kind of only stop bombers from winning the game. It's the bombers that go about and destroy ground units and strategic targets and it's the fighter's job to try and prevent that from happening. But then again, I think we all know what Ground Strike is a lot of times. Rather than that happening, <laughs> the majority of a game will be fighters versus fighters, just, I don't know, having an absolute melee against each other. So it looks like that that is going to be addressed, but there's also some other issues with Ground Strike as well. Uh, for the majority of the community, I know not all people probably think this, but a lot of people were complaining about the gr Ground Strike because the game was ending, the rounds were ending too fast, as in, even if there was just a handful of bombers on one team, they could end the game very quickly by either destroying ground units, uh, strategic sites, or even destroying the airfield. And at that time, it would just make... People would not have fun because the game would be ending so quick. And it would be ending a lot quicker than it would a domination match. However, I know some ground strike bombers who, you know, absolutely love bombing in ground strike are going to be really unhappy with this change. I think for the majority of the community, they would be happy, and this is something that they've been actually looking forward to. So, that means Ground Strike is being removed and replaced by something else. And I could only speculate about what this actually would be like, but I was actually thinking of what would be something that makes sense. It would have to be a kind of like a hybrid that allows fighters and bombers to both have a role. And, I mean, there's so many different ideas, and one of the ideas that I came up with was maybe there would be, like, big circles, sort of like cap zones in a way, where you don't have to land on it, but you have to be within that vicinity of actually doing something within that cap zone, if you get me. And in order to move on to another cap zone, it would have to be bombed out by the enemy team, and if you had a successful bombing, then maybe tickets would drain or something like that. I don't know, but that's one idea that I came up with with possibly a hybrid that will incorporate both fighters and bombers in a useful role. But what they are actually going to be doing, what Gaijin is going to be doing, I have absolutely no idea. However, we now know that there is going to be changes coming to Ground Strike. And that's going to be coming possibly in later iterations of 
and if that doesn't happen, then probably 1.49. Another thing that they mentioned was, and maybe a lot of us realize this by now, but they wanted to bring more events to experiment with different game mechanics like the No HUD events. So it seems like with the success of these combined arms and the events recently, people have been really enjoying them. And I think that Gaijin obviously recognizes this, and what they're going to be doing is using the events as not only a fun thing for people, but also as using us as guinea pigs, essentially, of things that they are thinking about implementing into the, into the game. So them using like the no markers, the no HUD and whatnot, is probably them practicing and getting feedback and data of what they could be working on to bring to War Thunder next. Now the next topic of discussion was about the matchmaker. Okay, this is about the spread with the actual matchmaker. At the moment, it can be anything between plus or uh, minus 1.0, and that doesn't include also if people are like having a bad match or whatever, so that can go up to all the way to like 0.7 or something as well. So like 1.7, essentially. Anyway, here we go. This is what they had to say. Updates on this. As usual, the p as usual, party line that adjustments and tests are being made and that BR spread greatly impacts queue times. However, our suggestion to at least reduce the spread to 0.7 was accepted, and it will be passed to the MM programming team for them to review and test for impacts such as queue times, interface slash UI impact, how anomalies and presets will be dealt with, ETC is currently high priority. Also changes to the matchmaker and progress on reviewing matchmaker are going to be communicated more regularly via updates, on the developer blog and a few major posts there describing different game mechanics are being drafted now. So it seems like the community's complaints about the BR system and the spread have actually made an impact. It seems like because at the moment when I said that goes up to 1.7 that's like the absolute worst if like a player has a really low efficiency and then they are boosted into a match or whatever. But normally it's just plus or minus 1.0. It seems like Gaijin is going to be introducing it so it's reduced to 0.7. That means more balanced matches and I think I'm actually welcome with that. I didn't actually have any complaints with the current 1.0 system because a lot of times as long as you worked your BR appropriately with your planes or tanks then you wouldn't be put into a bad match or whatever but it seems like reducing it reducing it to 0.7 well hey oh I guess we can't complain about that it just means better gameplay for all of us the only thing that I think that they're worried about are these anomalies and also perhaps with queue times maybe queue times will be longer as a result of this and chances are they probably will but if you're playing like arcade or whatever you know there's so many people playing arcade that it's probably not going to make that much of a difference but if you play realistic battles and simulator then maybe it'll be bigger especially depending on what tier you play at but we'll see what comes out of that still nice to know that br is being reduced so speaking about battle rating they actually talked about the battle rating user interface it says something that we had suggested a while ago is actually displaying br on the ui for your current lineup and your presets i know that this isn't a major thing but it's something that confuses a lot of new players. We highlighted again this meeting, and Pavel, Pavel agrees this really should be in the game. Gaijin will take action on this as soon as possible. And I think this is actually a really good change. This is a suggestion that has been cropping up a number of times on the War Thunder forums about adding just somewhere on the actual user interface that displays what your current battle rating is dependent on your lineup of planes or tanks or whatever because a lot of new players in this game are probably confused of what happens and then they'll go on the forums and they'll rant and rage of why am I getting put into a matchup against all these high planes and I have all these low ones or something like that. So just having a simple system that does all the calculations for you and just shows that overall number somewhere before you go out into match would be really really useful to have. It's nice that they're going to address that and actually put it into the game. So about bombers and AB ground forces, they said bombers and AB ground forces are a major problem. They're extremely hard to dodge and deaths from them don't feel fair. In our last meeting we floated a few separate ideas to fix this and Pavel especially like Cirrus' proposal to allow you to swap into an SPA when an enemy bomber was going to spawn like with the current fighter intercept option. Now I agree with some of the stuff that they said but I don't agree with their solution. I don't think that bombers should be punished here. I think the whole system should be reworked. 
Firstly, I agree that they're extremely hard to dodge because it's kind of unrealistic, first off, how bombers let off their bombs in AP ground forces. You would never get in a real life situation a bomber diving down to like 100 meters or even less than that to let off their bombs on a target and then suicide crash into the ground. That just wouldn't happen. The thing is, it's a game and it's arcade battles, so I can forgive them for allowing bombers to go down to like 100 meters or even less, but I don't think it's right that bombers, or any plane for that matter, should be purposely trying to crash into the ground. I think that's a bit ridiculous and there should be a bit of a penalty that comes into play for that. I don't know how they would figure that out, but there should be a penalty. But also talk about the reasons why a bomber crashes into the ground. It's because of a few reasons. First off, a bomber has almost no strength. When it's being shot at, it dies very quickly. We know that from normal plane matches, where a bomber is basically like a flying pinata of XB and lions. They can easily be shot down by single fighter with cannons, and the same thing applies in arcade battle of ground forces from tier 3 onwards. When you start seeing fighter planes with cannons on them, even a single fighter plane can easily shoot you down before you get to the ground forces that you can actually bomb. It happens to me all the freaking time and it gets kind of annoying. So that's one of the reasons. Also, there's about like a 30 or 40 second timer at which bombers can actually bomb. So they have to be kind of suicidal. So I propose a few things in order to actually rework this. Firstly, I think bombers should be stronger, stronger in terms of structural integrity so they're not easily shot down by planes. I think that Time should be increased in bombers so that they can be more careful about what they're doing. And also, thirdly, I think that ground units should not be highlighted for when you're in the bombers. So that all it would be like is just seeing black dots. You have to try and find those black dots with the more time that you have and then bomb them. So this is both beneficial for the bomber, giving them more strength, longer time out into doing bombing runs, but also harder for them to destroy ground units, which is better for the players actually on the ground. And also, I feel like there should be more XP or, I don't know, bonuses from actually shooting down a bomber so that there might be more players using SPAAs. Because, I mean, using this... They said basically using an SPA like a fighter intercept. So what, you press a button and then you go out into an SPA for a few seconds or something? I don't, I don't get that. So then what's the point of using an SPA a like just normally in your normal lineup i don't know it seems a bit strange i have to exactly see what they're going to come out with that i just think that there should be a constant air presence so that players would want to go into fighters and want to go into bombers and attackers and that spaa would have a role on the ground all the time trying to shoot down the fighters and whatnot to protect their ground forces to protect their objectives and so on and so forth i just think the whole system needs to rework be reworked and not only punishing bombers is the only answer to this. And finally, rewards for repairing friendly vehicles. This is being worked on and has a lot of support within Gaijin. Expected in the game probably by the time 1.49 comes out. So if you guys currently know, whenever your friendlies and ground forces are damaged, you can help repair them. But the thing is, you get nothing for it. So there's kind of like no benefit for actually doing it unless you're just feeling kind but now you're actually going to get a reward for it what i also really like is if they rewarded people for tugging other people with their tug ropes or whatever they're called tow ropes and flipping them over if they were flipped over on their side that would be nice as well but anyway guys a lot of cool changes coming out what are you most looking forward to what are your opinions and suggestions and actually since we're on the topic of the war thunder player council i believe the elections are going to be happening really really soon and as you guys might know, I am going to try to be in that election. But I'll talk about that more in the video when it comes out, when I need you guys to help vote for me. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And until the next one, this is Krebs, and I'll catch you guys next time.